From CGTN headquarters in Beijing, this is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to The Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. Just two days after the recent election in China's Taiwan region, Nauru, a small island country in the South Pacific, severed relations with Taipei. Its parliament has swiftly approved motion to restore diplomatic relations with Beijing. While Taipei and Washington regretted such an unstoppable shift, China and Nauru are now planning for their future cooperation. How will the bilateral relationship evolve going forward between China and Nauru? What lies ahead for the China Pacific Island country's community of shared future, especially given Nauru's participation? Now, to delve deeper into these questions, we have distinguished guests joining us from both China and the South Pacific. Joining us, of course, first of all, later on, hopefully, is Lawrence Fawn in Port. More spy in Papua New Guinea. He will be joining us later on. We're still trying to get to him. And in the meanwhile, we have in Beijing studio uh, Yang Xiyu, senior research fellow at the China Institute of International Studies. Now, uh, Professor Yang, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. China and Nauru, uh, or rather Nauru and Taipei, severed relations, broke diplomatic yeah. relations mm -hmm. two days after yeah. Taiwan's regional election. Yeah. What do you make of the timing? Well, I think two points uh, need to be noticed. Uh, firstly, as you mentioned, the timing is very important. Uh, two days after, you mentioned uh, the so-called local election, and uh, Nauru swift uh, their position to Beijing. That indicates uh, the the indicates the Taiwan is part of China, and also that indicates the uh, Nauru's decision is echoed with the major international trends of one China principle that is based on the uh, Kylo uh, Declaration, post Proclamation, and uh, the multi multinational treaty, the Japanese instrument for surrender, and the China-Japan peace treaty. All of the uh, legal documents uh, uh, define that uh, Taiwan is a part of China and that there's only one China in the world. So I think uh, Nauru's decision really reflects the major trends of the uh, international community, really reflects the historical and the legal truth of Taiwan's status quo uh, nowadays. Um, Professor Yang, if we look at the pattern, mm -hmm. uh, whenever there is a, a major provocation from Washington or Taipei, uh, especially it's DPP, the pro-independence mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. or uh, when there is a major election, um, going on uh, that is, um, you know, selecting or electing uh, pro-independent secessionist leaders, mm -hmm. uh, there tends to be a, a country breaking so-called diplomatic relations with Taipei. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of the timing of this all? Well, I, uh, first of all, I need to say, um, uh, no matter what kind of results of the election, the reality of the Taiwan status quo, the reality of Taiwan is part of China cannot be changed by any results of the election, no matter uh, Mr. A or Mr. B uh, uh, was wrong. Uh, and uh, regarding to U.S. Uh, response, uh, both to the uh, result of the election and uh, the Nauru's decision, I, I'm not surprised at all, Sim simply because for a long time, Washington has played the so-called two-hand uh, tactics. On one hand, they have to abide by their commitment uh, based on the international law and the international rules. But on that hand, uh, from their strategic uh, interests, especially uh, geopolitical strategic interests, they have been seeking for separation uh, between Taiwan and the mainland for a long time. So just based on the, the so-called two-hand tactics, on one hand, they never dare to say they support Taiwan's independence. But on the other hand, in many cases, they do something really supporting the Taiwan's uh, independent trends. I think the latest position and the response from Washington really reflects their uh, two hands uh, ta tactics. And regarding to uh, the uh, newly elected uh, person, I don't think. Uh, William Lai. Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, uh, Mr. Lai, no matter uh, what he said, uh, he cannot change. He cannot make any changes of the 
chance of Chinese unification. He cannot make any change of the Taiwan's legal status quo as a part of China. Of course, uh, de jure, Taiwan is part of China and uh, that is recognized by the United Nations. Uh, by over 180 countries in the world, by the international organizations, and even by Taiwan's own quote-unquote constitution, which claim the exact same territory, or pretty much so, as that of Beijing. So you recognize either Taipei or Beijing. You cannot do both. Uh, there are so many questions regarding uh, the timing of the Nauru switch of diplomatic recognition, diplomatic allegiance. Uh, if our audience remember well, in 2017, Panama uh, broke relations with Taipei and established relations with People's Republic of China. Uh, and then uh, Donald Trump made a very controversial phone call with Tsai Ing-wen, uh, then leader of Taiwan, uh, the outgoing uh, leader. Um, and at that time, I had this exclusive interview with the then president of Panama, Juan Valela, asking him about the timing, why Panama made this diplomatic switch. Was there so-called greenback diplomacy, checkbook diploma diplomacy involved? Let's listen to this interview in 2017. Uh, but on the other side of Taiwan Strait, and the leader of Taiwan, Tsai Ing-wen, upon your announcement of the switch, issued a statement expressing anger and um, regret, saying that Taiwan will not compete with Beijing for quote-unquote checkbook diplomacy. Was that a fair and accurate characterization of what happened behind the scenes? I didn't ask anything to China. I just did the correct thing to do for my country, for our people, and for the, for the future of a uh, strong relationship with China and Panama. But there were talks here, especially in the Western press, saying that uh, there might be you know, special deals or economic assistance. Uh, Not place. at all. Not at all. Uh, Professor Yang, what do you make of uh, these countries that broke relations with Taipei? Uh, and then about the accusation uh, that says, uh, you know, Beijing, um, it, it's all about Beijing's diplomatic and financial assistance to these countries that made them switch their allegiance. Well, I think uh, some, uh, many of such allegations you mentioned uh, are groundless. Let's look at the reality. No matter uh, what kind of countries, no matter what locations of the countries, China has contributed greatly and more and more to many, many varied countries all over the world for uh, connectivities. We call it as a uh, Belt and Road Initiative uh, that is designed to connecting the global world more efficiently, more green, uh, uh, more, uh, more green uh, uh, oriented, and more sustainable uh, sustainability. And uh, regarding to uh, the newly established uh, diplomatic relation with China, uh, the, the countries with China, I think uh, the economic assistances are only part of the bilateral relation. For example, Nauru. Uh, yes, we, we will certainly uh, provide economic uh, uh, assistances with economic corporations with Nauru, but not because of the diplomatic relation, but because of the mutual interest uh, between the two countries. And uh, so I think the so-called uh, uh, the uh, the dollar diplomacy is you know uh, is groundless. Yeah, very interesting. Um, in fact, um, how do you think this uh, you know uh, election in Taipei uh, and this diplomatic um, uh, developments will impact China's relations with the United States, which have shown signs of warming up, and now there's this election and then potentially confrontation. It's a very key question, and I, I believe many uh, observers, both inside China uh, and outside China, will closely watch the question you mentioned. Say, what kind of uh, effects uh, on China US relations after the Taiwan local election? I, I think that not depend on Beijing, but it depends on Washington. Say, if Washington make use of the results of the election to intervene the China's uh, uh, domestic issue, say, the unification, then that will be up and down of the, uh, the, the storm in the China-US relation. If the US really sincerely uh, insists on one China policy, I don't think such results 
of election in Taiwan have uh, any effects on China-U.S. relations simply because Taiwan has no official relation with Washington. And Washington set up an official relation with Beijing covering all over China, uh, all over China, including mainland and, 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 and Taiwan. But, but uh, some of American politicians want to make use of the uh, existing uh, separation between mainland and uh, uh, Taiwan to, for their own geostrategic interests. That will make uh, big troubles not only for China, but also for the United States, and also for the peoples across the street, including mainland and Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, going forward, what is there between China and Nauru when it comes to diplomatic, political, and trade investment cooperations? Well, I think the uh, normalization between China, that is the largest developing country, and uh, another is, uh, m maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think the smallest developing country. I think that will produce two significant meanings. One meaning is the uh, mutual prosperity between China and the Nauru, simply because China has their own advantages and the Nauru has their own either. And uh, uh, the cooperation between the two, based on the equal footing, will produce win-win results for both of the sides. And the other meeting is, as I mentioned, the largest developing country and the smallest developing country will set up a very unique model based on the equal footing for the win-win cooperation. That will set up a, a set of experiences for many uh, countries' cooperation. I think uh, the second meaning will produce profound influences all over the world. And the South Pacific is a key region of the world. Uh, yep. It lies between China and the United States, the North and the South and the East and the West. Yep. Uh, do you think this can have ripple effects for cooperation between China and Pacific Island countries going forward? Yeah, I think uh, uh, as the second meaning I mentioned earlier, uh, China and the Nauru Corporation will provide uh, very useful uh, models, experiences for cooperation between China and other South Pacific, uh, South Pacific uh, uh, Islands uh, uh, nation uh, countries. Uh, simply because uh, Nauru share many similarities with the other islands of uh, state islands at their area. Uh, therefore, uh, China and uh, Nauru cooperation will explore more means, models, methods for broader and broader cooperation, not only for the two countries, but also for the countries uh, else in this region. Thank you so much, Professor Yang. Uh, thank you so much for your insights. Now, in the South Pacific and beyond, China's diplomatic initiatives and collaborative endeavors faced, uh, uh, you know, vicious attacks, I would say, mainly from the Western media, if you look at their narratives on China. Uh, the, from the left and the right and the, the center, Fox News, uh, MSNBC, New York Times, you name it. So up next, we'll be joined by Jan Oberg, a Danish scholar who will reveal the behind-the-scenes workings of U.S. media. Stay tuned.